politically a hotbed yes. during, uh, I think, around 2010, yes. where people were evicted. Mm -hmm. After that eviction, yes. or initially this, this area was all settled mm -hmm. illegally. Yes. So after the, the evictions, uh, this is, that's when this area was left uh, unattended yes. and, of course, seriously integrated. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is measures with our stakeholders to assist us to bring back this forest to what it used to be. Otherwise, this was a purely indigenous place which was very intact. But of course, due to that illegal settlement, yes. we found ourselves in this situation. Now, Indoinet mm -hmm. has a total acreage of uh, 20,032 hectares. Out of that, as I've said, uh, uh, 8,000 hectares is virtually Degraded. Okay. That's what we have to. So almost, we are talking about half. Yes, we are talking almost a half okay. degraded. But uh, with the help of uh, our stakeholders, I am sure we'll be able to 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 recover this place. First of all, thanks a lot, uh, Julius, for coming. It was uh, really nice to speak in Nairobi and say we will come to the field, and here we are. So we appreciate we appreciate very much the support of the Kenya Forest Service. We have worked, worked very well with them since the beginning and uh, there is no better evidence than, than being here together. We have other partners around, uh, the CFA, Sharona is the secretary and I'm sure your other colleagues will be joining us. We have uh, KTDA, Alfred Sang, uh, the private sector, we work very closely with the private sector. Finlays and Unilever Safaricom will be on the other side. Uh, you will meet a lot more of our partners. Okay. We have done a lot. I will not go through it because we explained when we yes. were in your office in Nairobi. Uh, but rehabilitation is one of, of the biggest ones uh, that we have been doing. We have done another 300 hectares uh, between us and the partners. 57 from uh, KTDA, about 200 with Unilever, some 20 with Finlays and... Uh, a number of other partners. Okay. Uh, lots of work already on bioenterprise, so a lot of these community members have been trained on beekeeping. Uh, a lot of them are working with us to set up nurseries because we do need these seedlings and we want to get them as much as possible from the local community. Uh, Rhino Arc is also working with schools. Uh, we have identified 46 schools around here, every school um, in this neighborhood. Eight kilometer radius. 46 of them are working with us because the next generation needs to, to do um, their bit uh, where we have. We may fail to, to protect the forest. Mr. Wamayu here is from the Integrated Forest Conservation Management Consultancy Services. And uh, Mr. Wamayu is actually the, the person we have uh, uh, made an agreement with to do the rehabilitation work. He has been working here for the last month. Yeah. And well, the idea is to do the 300 hectares uh, by 2020. Tupenda kuchukua hii hi nafasi kuwakaribisha hapa Kukures, upande ya Doinet, ambayo ni area iko tunasema imeharibika na iliharibiwa na sisi, na tungependa kuirudisha ikae musitu ile ya kawaida. Uh, mimi ninayeongea na ito Francis Misonge ndio ecosystem conservator amba yule mulikuwa mnaitanga samani DFO wa Bomet mimi na wakaribisha na tunawakaribisha na ninafurai sana kwa nyinyi kukuja na kukuja kwenu leo ni tibitisho kamili ya kwamba hii musitu ni yenu na mungependa irudi ikue musitu ile mulikuwa mnajua wakati huo wa samani ama kuna wao wengine wenu ambao wanataka 
mambo ingine kuliko hiyo sisi zote tunaungana mkono kuhakikisha ya kwamba hii forest imeru, imerejeshwa mahali ilikuwa tuko pamoja tuko na idhini yenu kama community ya upande huu kuhakikisha kwamba tumepanda hii msitu na tuirudishe mahali ilikuwa tuko pamoja tuungane kuhakikisha kwamba tumechunga hii msitu kutoka kwa mtu yeyote ambaye ataonekana kuwa mwaribifu ya hii msitu tuko pamoja tuko pamoja bwana chief conservator you can see i'm not doing this alone I'm doing this with the community and I have their blessings to carry out this kind of uh, rehabilitation and they support this because they know what they have lost kutoka wakati hii msitu ilipoharibika so they want it, that this forest to come back to where it was tuna furaha ya kuona vile mmemiminika kwa wingi na tunajua mlihitaji kusikia sauti zetu na ndivyo tutakavyoonana na nyinyi siku ya leo ni chief conservator ataongea na nyinyi kwa niaba yetu lakini sikozi jambo moja la kusema kwanza ni kutambua upendo wenu na msitu ambao tunataka kurejesha tukiangalia vile mko na vile mmepanda hapa awali tunaona mioyo yenu kwa wazi mnataka tufanye kazi pamoja tunapopanda hii miti si ya KFS hii miti tunapanda ya sisi kama wa Kenya na wananchi ambao wako karibu na huu msitu. Tukifanya hivyo ni kunusurisha maisha yetu kutokana na janga ambayo inakuja. Simuliona vile mvua ilituhepa mwaka huu. Ilituhepa tu sababu hatukuwa na nanga ya kushikilia maji yakae juu yetu na yamiminike wakati inahitajika. Kwa sasa tunataka kurejesha hiyo hali. Na watu wetu tumege tugule. Uchomege ni verran. Hata mgo mingi tikpichu kiti soka rango taka tunge hitaji mtu atafsiri tusikia nasema nini ah hii amependeza sana nyinyi mpande ya miti hapa na hii miti ni mzuri sana kiti kiko beki mangeti kiki buru hotaki miti imeisha kabisa ile ilikuwa inaleta mvua imeisha sababu mepanda miti tumesaidia kupanda miti ili tuweze kurudisha hali ya msitu na tupate mvua tena leo hii tunashukuru Mungu sababu ametuletea fitu wa maana maovu sasa juzi tulisikia sijui watu wanataka kuondelewa kwa mao lakini saa hii tumethibitisha kwamba kumbe nyingi serikali ndio mnataka sisi tuchuke hii msito ndio tufanye maendeleo pale na hapa ni mahali pa nyuki na miti mimi tena nafanya research huko moyo university kwa hii maneno ya miti ya kienyeji kuna dawa nyingi ambayo yuko hapa na mnastahili nyinyi mchunge. Kuna miti ambayo yamekaa hapa almost 70 years. Tukiwa tumesaidiana na Kenya Forest Service, tunasema ongera kwenu kwa ile kazi ambayo tumefanya pamoja. Tumefika kiwango ambacho hatukua eh, tunajua ya kwamba tunaisafika kiwango kama hiyo. Na tunasema ongera kwenu kupitia eh, mashirika mbalimbali imetusaidia. Eh, pia tunaomba ya kwamba eh, hii msitu E, iko na wanyama iko na miti vile umesikia tunataka tuweke hiyo taratibu sijui kama utatafuta shirika fulani tukuje tuongee tuipange tujue ya kwamba kuna madawa kuna watu ambao wangesaidi labda wana, wanapenda e, kufanya research na wangefanya research e, kwa hii miti pia kwa wanyama chief conservator hapa tuko mpakani wa doinet wa bomet na, na nakuru msitu uko chini ya, bo, uh, ya Bomet wananchi wanatoka nakuru kwa hivyo tunapotoa msaada pale wananchi wanafaidika lakini ni wanakuru msitu hauna mipaka ile hali ya hewa na mazingira inatembea kwetu tu zote so tutaka hapo kwetu kiongea tambua hilo ndipo tujue tunapoita hawa wananchi wanakuja vile tunavyowaona ni wa ki administration wako na kuru lakini msitu uko pamoja na hii sio si kitu sio cha kawaida kuna kwingine kama huko kile mm. tunaomba tu ni wakati wanaposhirikiana na sisi wasijite watu wana kuru wajite wana mazingira nasimama kwa niaba ya nakuru county niweze kushukuru sana kwa sababu ya hii forest ambayo inatusaidia kwa mambo mengi imetusaidia 
tangu jadi tumekuwa tukitumia hii msitu imekuwa ya manufaa kwetu hata dawa tumekuwa tukipata kutoka huko na ninapoongea hivi nashukuru upande wa CFA nashukuru wananchi kwa jumla kwa sababu e, kama tungeachia maaskari peke yao wachunge msitu hawangeweza kwa sababu askari labda inaweza kuwa ni kumi ama hata kama ni ishirini. Wakisimama hapa tunatokea upande ule. Lakini mumekuwa wazuri, mumekuwa watu wangwana, tumeweza kuchunga forest pamoja. Kwa hivyo tunapohimizwa ya kwamba tuendelee kupanda miti, tuendelee kuchunga mazingira, sio kwa sababu ya serikali, ni kwa sababu yako wewe na mimi. We are the next generation ambao tunakuja kuendeleza kazi ambao mulikuja kufanya. Na hii kazi ya kulinda mazingira, Sisi kama vijana tume develop a passion ambao ya kulinda mazingira. Mazingira ni uhai. Tukuilinda inatulinda. Si namna hiyo? Ako mose na utu lona tururu kabana. So uh, mimi kwa ni hapa ya hawa. I want to say that we are my grateful for the job. All the partners wamepata kazi. Hii kazi yote ambao iko hapa mnaangalia ni vijana walikuwa na, walikuwa na shukulikia. So we are my grateful Bado tutakuwa na time lakini uh, tutakuja kuongea hii jinsi ya kusaidiana. Kwa ni hapa ya vijana tunapenda kazi ambao uh, uh, ya, ya KVS na wale wote partners ambao wanaendeleza maneno ya mazingira. Chamke. Tunafurahi anga sana kufika hapa. Nasikia hapa kunaitwa Kures. Sio Kipkoris. Kures. Tunashukuru sana kufika Kures. Kures. Asanteni sana kila siku tukikuja hapa mna tukaribisha tangu tuanze hii mradi ya Isla. Tumezenza mma sisi wote ni wana wana Isla, si ndio? Ukifika hapa tukishirikiana ni wana Isla. Na kama watu wako na nguvu wakishikana wote si wanafanya kazi mzuri? Na ndio tumeanza na tutaendelea. Nataka kutambulisha kwanza tunashukuru wananchi tunashirikiana na nyinyi. Tumeona KFS pia tunashirikiana na wao sana. Nataka kutambulisha partners wengine. Tuko na KTDA eh uh, wana Alfred Sang amefika. KTDA ni watu wa nini? Wachai. Tunashirikiana na wao. Tuko na SNV, SNV mnawajua? Kwa mambo gani? Eh? Mambo ya ngombe si mnafundishwa wengine wenu mnafundishwa na hawa. Na tunataka tukipata hela tena tuongeze wakulima wengine muendelee na masomo ya kulisha ngombe. Ndio tulishe nyumbani tukipeleka msituni tunapeleka kidogo sio yote si ndio? Eh? Kuna wengine hawajafika hapa leo. Finlays, Unilever, Safaricom. Si tulipanda miti na Safaricom siku nyingine? Tuko wengi. Na tunasema kila mtu amekaribishwa tushirikiane tuendeleze mazingira, tuendeleze pia nini? Uh, mambo ya mwananchi ile tunasema mapato ya mwananchi kinyumbani kama ni asali kama ni ngombe kama ni nini hiyo mambo yote tuchunge yote wakati ni kidogo kwa hivyo sitaongea sana na shukuru kwa kukaribisha sisi tumesema kama kukekuwa nafasi tungekunywa morusiki lakini sisi tutarudi asanteni sana kongoi ni vizuri mjue tukija hapa kama Kenya Forest Service kulida msitu Sisi diyo marafiki wenu wa kwanza. Sababu hatuchungi tu mahitaji yako ya leo. Tunyajaribu kusaidia uchunge mahitaji yako na ya mtoto wako. Na mtoto wa mtoto wa? Wa. Nani anachukia mtoto wake? Unaona mpaka hui amekuja kusikiza? Hai. Nani, nani anachukia mtoto yake? Hakuna. Sini kweli? So Kenya Forest Service musituone ya dui. Sisi ni marafiki wenu wa kwanza. Sababu misitu izipokuwa hata upande mahindi ama maharagwe kwa shamba na hakuna mvua utavuna utavuna so wacha tuangalie mambo kwa upa kwa upana sio kwa kuangalia na na, na jia ndogo nyama nyembamba lazima tuambie kwa upana na mimi nimetembea Kenya hii nimefika Mombasa hiyo wakati mdogo nimefika Tana River nimekuja mao tena hapa nikaenda kule Narok nimeenda kule Vanga the other day like tok tok nimefika Mimi kazi yangu si kwa ofisi ni wapi? Huku. Kuangalia kazi inaendelea namna gani? Namna gani? Na kwanza kwangu ni kuhimiza wananchi. Kwanza muone hao watu wa officers kama marafiki wenu wa kwanza. Sababu kuchunga miti sio makosa. 
na tusipo chunga tumeona vinye mambo ita itafanyika hakuna mtu atakona ruhusa ya kufanya mabaya ama madhabi kwa msi kwa msitu awe yako ndani ya serikali awe yako hii ako nje sababu hii ni mali ya, ya serikali lakini information msifiche mnakaa nayo mnaangalia mnatazama mambo ikikuwa mbaya mnasema ni watu walitoka watu walitoka kwani iko wapi si ni watu wanakuja wanapitia nyinyi tu ni mmoja wenu anaambiwa tuambie jia hapa ni wapi hata kwa boma saa hii uwezi ukatoka penye unataka kwenda kwa boma ile ile iko pale uende kuimba pale sababu haujui nini iko da lazima utavute mtu wa karibu na hiyo bo, boma akuelezee mlango ni hapa na kikiumana dirisha ni ni hii sasa kazi iko kwenu nyinyi ndio guard ya hii msi msitu mkiamua hakuna mtu atakuja kufanya mabaya hakuna ataingia lakini mkikubali atafanya nini lazima tupade miti tuichunge ndio CFA yenye tumesikia iko hapa i think why you are particular forest management plan lazima kuna kitu mgeuzia kama iko tourism ama mjaguzie hiyo iko hiyo ni nafasi ya watu kupata mapato kutoka ndani ya serikali na waweza kujimu kujimuru bila kuhari bila kuhari si ni kweli Big forest. We encounter quite a good number of livestock in the middle of the forest, and we flew over four bombers. And we have taken the exact GPS location of a four bomber. So actually, it was not just a flight, it was actually a, a working exercise aiming at recording some illegal activities inside the forest. So we have now that, that data that will clearly uh, help uh, the ecosystem conservator for bombers. Mr. Misonge who have been very active in addressing those issues, and I'm sure that that data will help in uh, addressing those specific bombers that we have noted. Um, what was a big set up, a setback for us was the fencing, which has been mentioned, um, and it would be good to, now that we're involving the government agencies, um, it would be good as part of our law strategy to just hear from them as to whether we'll have any positive feedback with regard to the fencing, of course, which is a big uh, a priority for us as a foundation. It's good to bring some with each other if we can, um, yeah, if we can move a little bit further. Just a little bit is already, I think, uh, great steps here. And whatever is happening up there in the forest is really key to us, and uh, it is uh, uh, a hope that uh, uh, out of this kind of interaction and out of that surveillance that we are now seeing, we will be able now to take care of this uh, forest uh, in, a, in a much, much better way. We need to get ourselves now much more organized. Of course, that issue of the forest and the issue of livestock up there, uh, when the climbing trees are getting destroyed, it really becomes a, a challenge to us. And I think if we are able to really focus on uh, ensuring that this now is taken care of, we think uh, we need to sort out some of these issues to ensure that uh, the trees are growing, they are all taken care of. I think you've heard about the fence. The fence will take care of the animals. Uh, but near to on the conservation belt that we are doing around the, the middle of the forest, could the soil side surface now will take, take care of uh, the human factor. Most importantly, there are two key issues talking about conserving the forest. We will be talking about water conservation in the same vein. So it's very important and very critical if we are addressing that question of erecting a fence, it is going to deter most of the locals from getting into the forest and majorly doing that destruction. And we as WRA already have uh, the community members, the rules on the ground. We have this one from Italian State, the Med, you go down that way up to Kipsonoi from a different here, Sisa and the others, we can keep them in touch, just like we are engaging the CFS. Because if you are talking to the community, you take a logical, <coughs> logical project to them, the rowers will do their part, the CFS will do their part, and we shall be moving in the same wavelength. To the effect that when it comes to that erection of the fence, it will not uh, meet any resistance from the locals given that maybe these people 
rely heavily on bookkeeping. So when you deter them from taking the cows to the fence, you should, just like the SMB and the other group is doing, tell them what to do as an alternative. And the most uh, economic method of doing this cattle keeping. So we insist as WA that let us come together, bring the rules together in the same wetland with the CFS. It is wise we first track the fencing issue. Also, we strengthen the outpost. Like after post, there was one outpost, I think it falls under narrow. Am I right, Mr. Masson? Yeah. It was found out. So, that one should be reinstated so that um, this combined effort is being promoted. I really support the bringing up of the fence, electric fence, um, to those parts of the upper part of the South of Mao. I think we might have been saying the same. And the mind was to remind the comment that for the output is the paramount so that to control this area. Because you to, to go deeper to the forest is a very big distance. You cannot uh, manage to move over 20 kilometers, then you, you turn back uh, up to the, the out, uh, up to the where you can be a sense of the means of returning back. If we can have the closest place to the outpost where it is the boundaries, then we, it is possible for both of even the rangers who are the to venture inside deep so that they can press it up. As uh, the easiest story is say, in fact, compared from the previous, as per now, uh, Mao is a bit controlled, especially inside of Bomet. Because if you compare like the previous pride, even this levers from this upper side, it was somehow red. But if you can con consider as per now, at least it is a sort of freshness. Uh, but uh, in the side of the animal, which is a big challenge, for the electric fence at this to be much better so that if we have the people in those outposts then it will be possible. Lastly, uh, if we can uh, manage also to get uh, at least additional personnel so that they can venture those areas because most of these stations like Maramar, Itar, the, the, the maximum rangers is not more than five the larger areas, if you can compare the coverage of this southwest mount, and this is now the core areas of Mount. Thank you for coming down to the ground to see the real issues. We had some really wonderful time with the community planting this morning. Um, I think all the work the partners have done has prepared the ground really well. Very friendly people, talking very positively. Um, very supportive and, and they are doing some, some good work out there. Uh, we thank everyone. Uh, we've come a long way, I think. Uh, I'm very, very proud. I'm sure you are too. we made some progress uh, so we can pat ourselves on the back. But we also do know that we have a long way to go. And I think um, this meeting speaks very well that we can go very far together. Uh, on the fence, um, I would like to confirm that between IDH and, uh, and the partners, we have resources. Uh, as somebody said, we were ready to go actually last year. Um, about two thirds of the, bu the budget, which we can uh, discuss uh, in, the, in the proposal we will give uh, to you, uh, two thirds of that budget is covered. We will be looking for some resources from the government if we get the approval to go ahead, which I hope we will. Uh, but uh, we do have we do have uh, resources on the table, uh, and we believe the, <coughs> the pilot has shown good results. But uh, if the farmers are supported to raise for their home, they actually don't get take the cattle to the forest. Um, and we are also hoping that some other resources we are looking for to support those projects will come will come in. All over here, all the partners of Isla this initiative. Good afternoon. I never knew today was an issue day. I thought it was just coming, planting trees, having some lunch, going, and we call it a courtesy meeting, and then we come with a deal, a serious one, where I look at the issues. I am three months in the office, uh, but basically what I believe in, and I think the first weeks I had, 
in the office was to building partnerships. Because without building partnership and sustaining them, it's difficult to do what we do. Indeed, what all you are helping us to do is our common. So that even if you are not coming in to support us, the government will not overtake us from making us accountable to protect these ecosystems. So to see that you are coming in to deliberate with us and to be able to work together, it's a bonus. And this relationship that we as Kenya Forest Service must be able to nurture and must be able to protect us. I speak that with the officer, my officers here because again, we have to change the way of doing business. We have to change our perception. When someone knock a door to come and assist and offer assistance, we have all the rights to welcome them and strategically see how can we benefit from that partnership rather than look at it from the issue of criticism or you're coming as a spy or you want to look at where things are not right. If we don't allow ourselves to be criticized positively, we will be criticized negatively and that will not even be more beneficial. So what I did is open up for all the partners and I know that the same same window that I you send the request, we came, we met in Nairobi and uh, I have made a series of partners to work with, including KTDA, we are with your team, including I think George, who is a Woodfield person at the headquarters. I have met with Dr. with Mr. Coril of the Nyao Tizon already. Uh, and, and I've met Reinhardt officially. We have met with Winnie, with you. It tells you that I believe in partnership and engagement. Now, the challenges that we have, first of all, we have to appreciate. I was surprised and I was amazed how relatively well managed Masai in Southwest Mao and the, the, what is it, the Transmara are. Because I have traveled also in this other part of the country and I have seen some areas you don't even see a tree. We are told you are in a forest land, but there is no single tree. You know about Malmanet? Basically, it was went to be a forest land. So coming and seeing this is a, is a, is a I can tell you, is a positive story. And then they, therefore we have to guard it positively and we have where there are challenges, we have to address them. When I came in, I think Nyao Tizon, uh, we, I think the relationship was not very, very, very nice, but it was a good relationship to say, but we have tried to really make it really work because we are state agencies and we must be able to support each other, sit down and agree. I believe if people sit down, there's no, with goodwill and mutual trust, there's nothing difficult to agree on. <laughs> I would start by saying that today is a momentous day for us uh, and for me for having a chance to visit and come over and naturally fly over the Transmara and the Southwest Mao and even uh, touch down at the forest where we met the community and we are able to do tree planting as a way of rehabilitating and restoring uh, our ecosystem. We appreciate as Kenya Forest Service that ourselves alone we cannot be able to do so much. We can only do what we can do, but also we have to appreciate the complementarity role that other partners can play. And therefore, when I was invited to come and you know, have a meeting with ISLA, which is one of the a major project or platform that has brought together donors, private sector, non stick actors, and the government, and even the communities, to just not do much, but to conserve our environment and go beyond to enhance the livelihood of the people that sits near the forest adjacent areas is amazing. And this, I think, is an area that we must be able to enhance as Kenya Forest Service and push it to the next level. And therefore, having planted the trees, having had discussions, yes, we noted there are some areas that we have done so well. The irregularities in terms of charcoal have gone down, but also we still have challenges with regard to the grazing. And we are working together as Kenya Forest Service and other arms of the government and the ISLA and the community around to be able to address this issue because that's the only way we'll be able to achieve the objective of ensuring that we sustainably manage the ecosystem for the good of us who are here today and for the future and basically for the ecological benefit we get including water supply, support for ecotourism and actually basically supporting the food production along the farmland. So I think it's something that we have to embrace as Kenya Forest Service drawing and nurturing and protecting the partnership we have in supporting us to meet our objective, which is to protect, conserve and manage our forest resources in this country.